changing air filter is very simple. New cars today, you've got lines of code. It's time for Drive With Me TV. This is Drive With Me TV. With your host, Dave Jigster. So get behind the wheel with me, Dave Jigster, for Drive With Me TV. Hi, I'm Dave Jixter from 97 Rock. Welcome to Drive With Me TV, Western New York's only automotive television show. On this edition, a top doc takes us for a spin. The car care coach, Lauren Fix, is back with what's trending in automotive. Find out what's under the hood from Pete, the car whisperer. What should you do if you get into a fender bender? And check out some of the hottest wheels that were on display at the Buffalo Auto Show. So let's get rolling with our friend, John DeShulo. Take a look at these hot wheels here in Western New York. You know, at Come Drive With Me, we want to feature some of the hottest cars in town. And if you look at this fleet that we've got here right now, you'd think, hmm, is it owned by a race car driver, uh, an auto dealer? Well, no, it's, these cars are owned by Dr. Michael Nazareth from Western New York Dermatology. Dr. Michael, thanks for joining us on Drive With Me. Thanks for here. having me. You have, quite, here. you have quite a fleet here. Let's start with this Porsche. What year is it and tell us all about it. So this is a uh, Porsche 911 Turbo S from 2017. This is the 991.2 generation, uh, 580 horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds and a top end of 205 miles an hour. Wow, and the uh, engine's in the back. Yes, that's always the fun thing with uh, Porsches that the engine's in the back and uh, you got the front trunk with those ones. What's the, the other vehicle that you've got? It's a Lexus, right? So this is a Lexus LC 500. Uh, this was Lexus's newest coupe last year. It was featured in, uh, in a couple of movies and things like that, including Black Panther. Uh, this car has a really nice high revving, naturally aspirated five liter V8 that pumps out 471 horsepower and really sounds marvelous as it screamed out to 7,200 revs. And something very unique about the hood with pyrotechnics that I don't think a lot of our viewers would even realize. Correct, so because Lexus wanted that really low hood design and they still had to meet pedestrian safety standards, there's actually pyrotechnic charges on the front and back hinges to pop the hood up in the event of an accident to make sure that pedestrians are protected and there's enough clearance over the engine block. Who knew? Yeah. And my favorite color is red. The Jeep there is a, 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 a Hellcat, is That's that it? correct. So this is taking, you know, Dodge's famous 707 horsepower Hellcat motor that's been in the Challenger and the Charger for a few years now and stuffing it under the hood of a Grand Cherokee, having all-wheel drive, so great for Western New York, and uh, it'll actually hit 60 in the low three-second range. Well, my favorite color is red, so we're, we're going to pick the Jeep. Let's do it. Let's go. I have never seen anything like this. This is not just how fast you're going and uh, how many miles are left on your tank of gas. This is a complete Correct. So you can kind of customize the vehicle to what you're doing. You know, if you're out for a nice cruise, you can keep the suspension kind of soft. If, if you're really hammering it through some twisty roads, you can, you know, try and make the suspension a little bit stiffer. I can pull up the performance pages here, which will actually show you a real-time dyno of the engine to show you how much uh, horsepower and torque the vehicle is making and also the gears that it's choosing as it shifts. What made you pick this particular vehicle? What was it about this Jeep? I've always liked, uh, I've had Grand Cherokees before and I've always liked Jeeps and it was nice to be able to get one with a little bit more power, but it's still very practical. I can take the kids in this vehicle. Uh, I've driven it on trips out to Syracuse, down to Washington and things like that. And it's actually very good in the snow. There's a snow mode on this. So it's actually quite reasonable even in our weather in the snow. Let's talk a little bit about who you are. Uh, we've heard, you know, heard your spots on the radio and some people who are watching have probably been treated by you from Western New York Dermatology, and you've been in that practice uh, seven years, I understand. Uh, yeah, five years. We founded the practice about five years ago. Uh, started, you know, with about a staff of 10 people and now have over 50 on staff. We're adding a Mohs surgeon this summer and building a new uh, new Mohs surgery center, which will be opening probably uh, at the end of August, early September. So. Uh, really changed the way we do derm in the area. We try and do everything under one roof. So we do medical dermatology, surgical dermatology, cosmetic dermatology, and we even treat kids with pediatric conditions. Yeah, I saw that. And, uh, and you're on Spindrift. Yes, we're on Spindrift in Williamsville, you know, just down the street from uh, Windsong. We are trying to raise melanoma awareness. Uh, last year, I started the Love of Skin Foundation, actually. Well, that's terrific. What, what is there a website for this, Doc? Yeah, it's loveofskinfoundation.org. You can also get to that from our uh, WNY Derm uh, website as well. Uh, so that's been a, a really nice uh, cause for us. And have seen some definite strides there in trying to raise awareness uh, so that kids are more protected. It's very rewarding for me to practice in the same community that I grew up in. 
Uh, my wife is local too. She's a pediatric anesthesiologist The children, so the Make-A-Wish is definitely something near and dear to her heart. Uh, you know, the Festival of Trees and things like that sure. that also supports children. So we're very fortunate to live in a community that really cares about uh, uh, people in general, and we are the city of good neighbors after all, and I think it's been great to see the response with some of these events that have really helped our community. Oh, big time. So what was your first car? <laughs> My first car, uh, when I turned 16, I had a uh, 1995 Subaru Legacy, uh, which got me through uh, high school and, and the first part of college there. And then I had a Subaru SVX, uh, which was a very cool car because that was Subaru's two-door sports car back in the day with that window within a window. So that was my first kind of high performance car that I ever owned. A oh, camera dude in the back there, Richie. Oh, here we go. <laughs> camera dude's thrown into the back seat. But he has a Subaru too. He swears by them. Yeah. And, uh, They're great in bad weather. Uh, my mother still has an Outback actually. What moved, moved you to become a bit of a collector now with, with these high-end vehicles that we just saw? So it started actually with, uh, with, with the Jeeps and things like that, and I obviously like the high-performance motors. Uh, I'd always dreamed of having a, a Porsche 911, so that was the most recent addition to the fleet. Um, never really thought about the, the Lexus LC till I drove one and really loved the sound. Uh, it's not as fast actually as this Jeep, even though it's probably the sportiest looking of my vehicles, but uh, it sounds very good. That car's kind of got a great dual nature. It can cruise effortlessly, just like the luxury you'd expect of a Lexus. And then when you want it to be, it can be quite sporting as well. Um, obviously, this one's kind of got that Jekyll and Hyde personality too. That you know, it can be a very comfortable, you know, relatively almost boring Jeep. Like Grand a normal Cherokee. ride, but then bam! And when you want to, uh, it can actually outdo some Ferraris and you know Lamborghinis in a straight line. So the performance pages, you can see the the uh, dynamic go up and down as we move along. Correct, so you're actually seeing real-time horsepower and torque and the little numbers at the bottom there are showing you what gear the car is picking. Uh, if we want to do other fun sure. things, you can actually pull up the G-forces that you're experiencing. So when you accelerate, you can see that it shows you that you're, you're getting a couple of dots further down. When you brake firmly, uh, you'll see that on there. This is kind of neat to look at if you're on a track because you can actually see what kind of uh, G-forces you're generating both forward and backwards and lateral acceleration as well. So not only is this a car, it's a giant computer. Correct, and honestly, that's, that's really the way things have become. When we put a man on the moon, that computer didn't have as much power. All those computers together is what's now in your most basic like Ford Fiesta or Chevy Sonic. I've heard that, yeah, that the technology to get to the moon 50 some years ago wasn't as much as we have right here. Well, look, Dr. Michael Nazareth, some of your dreams are coming true, more to come. You're giving back to Western New York uh, through your practice and, and, and now you know enjoying your hobby. And thanks for taking us on a ride to come drive with me. Thanks for having me on the show. Definitely one of the shows I love watching. You're welcome. Welcome back to Drive With Me TV. And now it's time to take a look at the dashboard. And today we start at Automotive News all the way over in Japan where Toyota Motor Corp is gearing up for another run at the U.S. electric vehicle market, possibly starting with a crossover developed jointly with Subaru. These two Japanese car makers said last week they will develop a dedicated EV platform and build a C-segment crossover on it that each company will sell separately. The announcement was part of a messaging blitz by Toyota that it intends to amp up EV deployment and even introduce a solid state battery by next summer. The results of a competitive market for electric vehicles could be shocking. Meanwhile, speaking of electric cars from Car and Driver, comes word that the Volkswagen IDR electric vehicle has just lapped a 12.9 mile Nordschleife, better known as Norburgring, a famous track in Germany, in a time of six minutes and five seconds, the second fastest ever recorded and a clear 40 seconds inside the previous fastest electric race vehicle there. The record run was accomplished with an average speed of 128.6 miles per hour, according to Volkswagen. Now that is electrifying. From CarBuzz comes word that Volkswagen will begin installing charging stations nationwide for electric vehicles. Electrify America has partnered with Walmart to install more than 120 ultra-fast electric vehicle chargers as part of the company's $2 billion investment to build fast charges across America. The partnership with Walmart will make the retailer one of the largest charging hosts in the country. Imagine a trip to Walmart where you use your charge card to charge your car. By the way, if you're curious about some of the costs of the top-selling electric cars, take a look at some info 
from Energy Sage. Nissan Leaf, 22,490 bucks. Chevrolet Bolt, $29,995. Tesla Model S, 67,000 bucks flat. And Tesla Model X, 72,000 bucks. These prices are after the $7,500 tax credit for purchase of an electric vehicle. And finally, in our dashboard trivia, can you tell us how much the first electric vehicle costs? We'll have the answer when we return.